Now I'd like to take a tour with you of the outside of a typical personal computer. In order to be useful, a computer needs to have an input device of some kind, at least one, and it needs to have an output device of some kind. If we have a computer along with its input and output devices, we could call that a workstation. And input and output devices are often referred to as peripherals because they are peripheral or outside of the computer. For example, output peripherals would be a monitor, a printer, headphones and speakers, and other things. Input per peripherals could be keyboard, mouse, microphone, scanner, camera, just to name a few. All of these devices would connect up to the back of the computer or the front of the computer in some cases through various connectors such as a serial port, USB port, parallel, game port, Ethernet connector, telephone connector. The monitor connects up to a video connector on the back of the computer. There are several different types of video connections and there are several different types of displays that are used with computers. The most common and popular today is liquid crystal displays, LCD. Becoming more popular is light emitting diode displays, LED. And then cathode ray tubes have been popular for a very long time and are becoming less popular because they're heavy and big. Printers might include laser printers, inkjet printers, solid ink printers, dye sublimation printers, or maybe even dot matrix printers. And we have a chapter just on printers we'll talk about in greater detail. Speakers and headphones are an output device used on a computer. We have a chapter later on sound and video. Keyboards are input devices, input peripherals for your computer. A mouse is also an input device, whether it be a mouse that you move around on a table or a mouse pad. A microphone is an input device, like the one I'm using right now. I'm using this one here. An input device, such as a scanner, is a peripheral. Cameras are considered input devices because they take an image and convert it to data which can then be input into your computer. And whether it's a, com a camera that you connect to your computer all the time, like a webcam or perhaps a digital still camera or a digital video camera. All of these devices connect to the computer through some kind of external connections. I want to talk a little bit about these different connections. For example, the keyboard. On a lot of computers, they have special connectors just for the keyboard. They also have a special connector sometimes for a mouse. Although a lot of times keyboards and mice also connect to a very uh, universal connector called the universal serial bus. So some computers don't have these two connectors. Speaking of universal serial bus, it is a type of connection to a computer that can be used for both input and output and is used with many different devices. There are many different possibilities for devices that could use USB. Most computers have audio ports on them, some way to connect up speakers and microphones. They will usually have some type of inter network connection for connecting to a network and the internet and that's called a LAN or Ethernet port. Here we see that on this particular computer. Computers may also have serial ports. Serial ports are becoming obsolete because many times they use a USB port and you, if you really need a serial port, you can just plug an adapter into the USB and it gives you a serial port. So a lot of computers don't even have serial ports anymore, but, but they're still available. And serial ports were used with things like modems and other slow devices that didn't need to communicate very quickly. Also, computers may have a parallel port. A parallel port is this bigger connector here with 25 pins. 25 pin connector is used to connect to a printer mainly although it can be used for some other devices as well. 
and it's also pretty much obsolete as well. Most printers nowadays, if you want to connect it directly to your computer, will be USB port connectors, USB connections, or sometimes they connect up to the network through the local area network or LAN. So on today's computers, you may not find some of these connectors. You may find uh, that there's no, no keyboard or mouse connector, no serial port. The 9-pin serial port may be missing, or the parallel port may not be there. And then the video connector will be there for sure, but there are also different types of video connectors. Let me talk a little bit about some of these connectors in greater detail. On, on the, some computers, especially older computers, you'll find what's called a PS2 or mini DIN connector. It's a round connector, and it has five pins on it, five little wire, uh, no, excuse me, six wires, six wires. Now, the old, there was an older style uh, connector for keyboards on really old computers that used five, and the ones now use six. And that's used for your mouse and your keyboard. So there's one for your mouse and your keyboard. That isn't always the case anymore because a lot of times mice use USB, so they'll use that instead, but you may, you'll still find this on a lot of computers. USB, or universal serial bus, is, can be used for lots of different devices. It allows you to hook up all sorts of different devices to your computer, and that's why it's called universal, so uh, it can be used for just about anything. So a lot of times keyboards and mice connect up to USB nowadays. USB can handle up to 127 devices. And it, it eliminates a need to open up the inside of your computer. It used to be that you had to open up a computer a lot of times to put devices in it. But now you don't have to do that anymore, pretty much because USB allows you to connect it outside. What kind of things US, use USB? Oh, there's just all kinds of things you can use USB with. I already mentioned keyboard and mice, but you can connect up scanners and connect up printers. You can connect up uh, sound devices. You can connect up plotters, uh, microphone. I'm using a USB microphone right now. Uh, pads to draw pictures on, like I have a little drawing pad I use sometimes in the class for drawing on the screen. That hooks up to USB. So all sorts of things, and, and just about anything you would imagine that they make for a computer, there's probably a USB version of it, even toys. USB devices can be daisy-chained. In other words, you can connect one from one to another. Instead of, say, say your computer has maybe four or five connectors on it for USB. That's pretty typical. But maybe you have more things than that. Maybe you have more things. Well, what you can do is get a USB hub. It's a little box that that allows you to connect more things up to your computer. You connect the USB to one of your USB ports on your USB hub to one of the ports on your computer, and then you can connect other devices up to the hub. Firewire. Your computer may have a Firewire port on it. Firewire is also known as IEEE 1394, or just 1394 port. Firewire is a lot like USB and can be used with many different devices as well. It's become particularly popular for video. It's also called digital video. And it's used with digital cameras sometimes, or digital video cameras particularly. And uh, it's hot swappable, which means you can plug things in and out while the computer's running. You don't have to worry about you know, crashing the computer by plugging things in and out. It, hard drives sometimes use this as well, because it's very fast. Serial ports. You'll find on older computers, particularly you'll find serial ports, or you may buy that as an accessory for your computer. A serial port is used, was used by modems mainly. It was used by some printers in the past and even some digital cameras, but it's not very fast, so pretty much most of those things use USB or FireWire. Typical serial ports have nine pins, and on some old computers they had 25 pins. They're D-shaped. So if you find a D-shaped connector, and this would be a male type connector with a pin sticking out. And it would be either 9 or 25 pin. Parallel ports are found on a lot of computers. Parallel ports have 25 pins. These are female. And they are typically used for printers. And there are some other devices that also use parallel ports. And it's D-shaped. It has 25 holes or places for the 25 pins to go into on the connector. 
Your computer probably has a VGA connector on the back of it. That's a connector for video, for the video display. And that may be the, a 15 pin a VGA type connector, which is called HD15. It's also D shaped. It looks a lot like a serial port, but it has more pins. Instead of having 9, it has 15. It's about the same size. But that's not the only way you can connect up video to computers nowadays. You might also use a DVI connector. And DVI is, stands for Digital Video Input, although it may also be analog. And so there's actually digital and analog signals here, meaning that some monitors receive data as voltages, as signals that are analog in nature. We'll talk more about analog and digital in a later presentation. But also, they may be just receiving data as numbers. So there's different types of DVI connectors. You can see some of the different variations here. We'll talk more about this in our chapter on video. And then the latest type of video connector you'll find on a lot of computers and other video devices, like DVD players and monitors, is HDMI. HDMI is a type of connector that carries both audio and sound together. So that can be used on a, on a PC as well as on other devices. So you might find a video connector. Here's a DVI connector and there's a, an HDMI connector all on the same video card that goes inside a PC. Game sticks and joystick ports are used for, well, joysticks uh, for games. And they can also be used for MIDI or musical instrument digital interface, which is where you connect up a musical instrument like a keyboard or some other electronic instrument. They can not only control the instrument, but play, make the instrument play. And uh, these are D-shaped connectors. They have 15 pins. They're bigger than a video or serial port connector. RJ11 is a, what we'd often call a telephone connector. And a lot of computers have that for the modem. RJ45 looks like a telephone connector, but it's bigger. It has a bigger connector, and it's for the Ethernet or network connection. List the three minimal workstation components that you would need. What are the three things you would have to have to have a usable computer workstation? Well, you're going to have to have some kind of input device, such as a keyboard, mice, for example. You're going to have the computer itself, and you have to have some kind of output device, such as a monitor. What are these connectors? These are the type these are connectors you're going to find on the back of a computer. Can we identify them? Well, the one on the left is a serial port connector and we can identify it because it has 9 pins. It's D-shaped. The next one here is a VGA connector. It looks like kind of like a serial port, but it has 15 pins. And it's a female connector, but the serial is a male connector. A, the next one is game connector. That has 15 pins also, but it's bigger than the VGA connector. And that has for your game port and MIDI. And then the big one is a parallel connector. That was used for mostly for printers and some other devices. Name the port and list the two devices which use this type of connector. That's a six pin connector and it is used for keyboards and mice. And it was also referred to as a mini DAN or PS2 connector. PS2 is a type of computer made by IBM that they developed this connector for. What kind of a port is this that you'll find on the back of many computers? Well, this is called a Firewire or IEEE 1394 or sometimes digital video connector. What is this very popular port called? This is the Universal Serial Bus, or USB connector, used to connect all sorts of devices to a computer. And what are these two types of connectors here? Well, on the top, we have an RJ45 connector used for networks, for Ethernet networking. Like you might use that to connect your computer to a modem, a uh, cable modem. And this one, that's for your telephone. Next, we'll look at the inside of your computer. But now we'll take a little break.